Hey guys, welcome back to a beautifully rainy day here at the nursery. Um, we just finally got some really good rain and it is fantastic. Um, you can see I'm in a short sleeve shirt because it's humid, it's lush, it's beautiful, and we're going to be talking about how to grow pineapples from the crown that you find when you buy a pineapple in the shop or the grocery store for all the Americans out there. Okay, so basically, this pineapple in this 20 centimeter pot right there has been in this pot for about just under two months now. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you how you can utilize the pineapples that you get in the shop. Um, and so, first and foremost, I just want to give you some information on the pineapple. Um, so firstly, let me just put this on the ground for a second. So in South Africa, we've got two main cultivars of pineapples, which you would find on your shelves. So the one is the smooth cayenne pepper, like pepper, but smooth cayenne pineapple. This pineapple, you would see, when you look at it, you would be able to tell it apart from the others because the crown, which is the spiky bit on the top of the pineapple, is smooth. So the edges, the margins of the leaves are smooth. They have no serrations or very few serrations on the edges of the leaves. So it's generally a very big weighty pineapple. It's quite a big pineapple. Um, they can weigh quite a bit as well when they're, when they're mature uh, or ripe. And the converse of that, or the other species, is called the queen pineapple, which is a little bit smaller, and it, the crown is extremely serrated. It's the, call it vicious pineapple. It's the one that always pricks you, that you have to be careful with when you, you know, it will cut your grocery bags and that sort of stuff. Um, so those are the two. The one, which is the queen, is generally smaller. It is a lot tastier. It's sweet. Um, it gets used for juicing, um, you can make pulp for cake and stuff like that um, to, you know, when you're doing a flan, if you know what a flan is. Uh, my cameraman or woman would know what a flan is because she's a baker. Um, and the other one, which is the cayenne, the smooth cayenne uh, pineapple, is a pineapple they use for canning, so, or stewing, or preserving or that sort of thing. It's a very weighty, heavy, fibrous pineapple. Um, and so these are the two variations on pineapple that we find in South Africa on our shelves. And so what I've got is I went yesterday, I went for a shop run during COVID, right? To go and get some other stuff. And I happened to walk past the pineapple section and I saw that people were twisting the top crowns off of the pineapples and discarding that into the into the container where, where the pineapples are being kept and they walk away with the pineapple and I looked and I was like can I get the manager please and I called the manager and I literally asked them if I could have all these leafy crowns um, because they're going to be tossed out anyways and they said yeah okay great and they looked at me like I was from another planet because everyone else is here for food and essential items and you're here for the tops of leftover pineapples so that's how do you know me so I did so I got them and they said yes I could take them so I took them home and yesterday I already filmed that part so I just felt like I needed to give you some extra information and this is basically what we're doing right now. And thank goodness for film, we can put this episode together into one episode for you. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is show you how simple it is to actually take that and turn it into a living plant which will give you benefit. So if you like pineapples, you're going to get something really good out of this. Personally, I don't really like the flavor of pineapple. Another reason why I'm doing this also is because I love bromeliads. The nursery is called Bromeliad Kingdom, and it's ridiculous I don't have an episode on the most basic, most well-known bromeliad on the planet, which, by the way, comes from South America, 
from the tropics to subtropics of South America. It is unlike some of the other bromeliads. For example, let me show you this one here. So unlike this bromeliad, which if you look on the inside, you can see that this one actually holds water. So this is basically what they call a tank bromeliad. So these are epiphytes. And epi again means on and phyte means plant. So it means on plants. And plant actually means it grows on other plants without hurting them. It's not, it's not a parasite. It is a mutual relationship where they both benefit mutually. So the pineapple is a terrestrial bromeliad, which means it is ground growing. Terra firma, earth, that's where they grow. And so the growing medium is slightly different. When you're growing them in the ground, it's going to be slightly different. So pineapples generally like a very loamy soil. And the epiphytic varieties are generally more bark based. Now, with respect to the growing medium, here's a little tip for you on all plants. So if someone gives you a plant and they tell you, oh no, but I just grow it in this. And they live like at a different latitude in another part of the world or even in the same country but in a different part of the country it doesn't necessarily go to say that their growing medium is going to work for your plant and why that is true is because of this your if you take an entire year's worth of growth or of temperature of climate if you've got an average higher humidity, you've got an average higher temperature, you've got an average higher rainfall, your decomposition, the rate at which things decompose is a lot faster, which is why tribes in the Amazon, their language is spoken and not written, because they don't have anything to write on, because everything decomposes really quickly, they can't hide it from the humidity. So everything is carried from generation to generation by word of mouth. And so in the same way, plants actually break down things so fast or the environment breaks down things so fast that you don't have that luxury of of keeping historical records and so the plant is the in the soils and and biodegradable matter like leaves and fruit and twigs and branches same thing so because i live in a climate where it is relatively humid and relatively warm and relatively um, constant in temperature and climatic conditions it doesn't vary too much i can afford to use different kinds of mediums so i won't if i use clay that's a bad thing because then i'd have it would be way too wet for way too long and the plants would rot and especially with the crown which you will see and i'll talk about that you don't want infection happening and sitting in into the bottom of the plant or it won't live okay so it basically breaks down organic matter so much faster in a warmer climate with more rainfall than it than it would in a cooler dry drier climate and and so for that reason the tip is when when you get that information when you get the plant and you look at it just um research the plant and where it comes from and then also know your own environment but i'm going to use for my pineapples which you can see how well this one's done this i'm going to give you the same mix that i've actually used for an epiphyte pretty much the same it's very very small in variation um and you can see how big this is already it's well i mean you don't know what it looked like before but hey um, so this plant is, is ready to go into the garden already because the roots are coming out the bottom. So you can actually see that there. And remember this started with no roots at all. And now it's got this big crown. Another tip I want to show you is with bromeliads, if the outer tip of the leaf dies, it means the plant went through a space where it did not have enough water for time and the reason why is because procrastination is not an art form yet we're all susceptible including myself and this is what happened with this plant i kind of left them laying just in the shade for like two weeks before i planted them so yes we are all guilty of those things however i didn't let it die so on the central urn you can see there are no longer any dry tips they're all just very good and very healthy 
and you're not having any of that anymore. So the plant is going to do fantastically now and then soon I will get to eat some pineapples. Okay, good. So let's move on. So I got these, I got these uh, four pineapple crowns, right, um, from our local food market, which people have obviously just twisted off of the top of the pineapple. So you can see uh, they, I've actually checked there, some of them are quite dry already at the base. So, um, and you can see all of those little, uh, little dots around the outer edge those are all potentially new plants and roots as well um, okay in this case they're roots the plants would obviously be f a little deeper in along these um, leaf brackets where they where they meet the actual core of this crown okay so I didn't actually get any pineapples because I don't really particularly like the flavor of pineapple uh, except on pizza or in small quantities or you know stuff like that but anyways point is i'm going to show you how to uh put these into the ground these are plants that get really really big for bromeliads okay so the, the bromeliads pineapple bromeliads get really really big um so they can be in excess of a meter across so yeah let's uh i've got some medium and basically what i'm now going to do is uh let me just see if i can just show you what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to, you see these leaf bracts here at the base? So I'm just going to start pulling them off. And you pull them in a downward motion so you don't actually damage the plant. So essentially what I like to do is I just, I'll just tap some cinnamon on there. Just regular powdered kitchen cinnamon. Smells like pancakes. And then I just put that on there. Done. So I'll do that for all of them. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So now I'm gonna get the growing medium and I'm gonna show you how to mix that real quick. All right, okay, let's go. Right, so what I've done is I've filled four 15 centimeter pots with growing medium, suited for uh, growing a pineapple in my area. Now, what you have to remember is this. What works for one plant in one area will completely and utterly not work and potentially be detrimental to the same plant in another area and what I mean by area is climatic zone or condition or 
ambient humidity and that sort of thing. So basically what you need to keep in mind is the following. Plants, or climate rather, climate breaks down organic matter, right, which is the stuff, that's bark, that's wood. Um, and, and then there's cocoa chip in there, and, uh, and then there's also some potting soil in there. Now, basically, the more humid or the higher the rainfall you have, um, the warmer the temperature, the quicker organic matter will break down. The converse of that is, the cooler it is, the slower everything will break down. Now, what you have to remember about the pineapple bromeliad is that it prefers a free-draining soil. Um, so, if you've got loam, you can plant it in loam. Um, the only thing you need to remember is it does not want to be waterlogged. Now, I'm not saying pineapples are relatively drought resistant. Um, so, they need at least, I'd say, two and a half centimeters. That's what, like an inch of rainfall during the growing season um, every week, right? But what you do have to remember is the faster your medium breaks down, the quicker this stuff will turn to sludge in the pot. Now, I'm using a 15 centimeter pot because I know, number one, bromeliads don't like a lot of space in their pots, especially when they're starting out. You want to use a small pot. If you go to stores and you buy bromeliads off the shelf, like pretty ones for like indoor growing and things like that, you generally would find them in a pot that looks ridiculously small. It's almost the plant is top heavy. Now, the reason for that is because in nature, where bromeliads grow on trees, they don't necessarily need a huge space for their roots because their roots are usually used for attachment. Now, in the case where the bromeliad is terrestrial, it obviously does do uh, nutrient uptake and all of those kinds of things via the roots. So with that said, I'm going to repot this at a later stage and I'm going to take it one size up as the plant gets bigger. But for the initial, getting it rooted and growing it, I'm using this small 15 centimeter pot. And by spring, we're now um, in the middle of autumn. So one more month and one more month to go and then we'll be at the start of winter. Now it is warm pretty much all year round. So we don't really get like super, super cold and we don't get frost and that sort of thing. So the humidity is quite high. So I've used a lot of organic matter, but I've also used a lot of river sand in here. Um, so I will put up on the screen the type of growing medium you can use. Okay, but you need to then just research for your area and check which medium would be the best. So basically, I've put it in here, that's it. We've dusted them with cinnamon, right? To stave off any kind of infection that may potentially happen. And then basically, all I'm going to do is, I'm not even going to stress about it. I literally just stick it down in there. Um, and I stick it in to about, what, that deep? I don't know how deep that is, let's see. So I stick it into about that deep. Might be a bit too deep, some people would say, but I always do it this way and I never have any fatalities, okay? They do just fine. They grow beautifully. And then basically what you're going to do is, uh, that's one, I'll put that aside, get the next one, stick it in. Whoops, that was a bit rough there. Eh? Manhandle the pineapple. Um, stick it in. And the reason why I'm actually just putting it slightly deep is so that it doesn't topple over. So that it's firm, it's set in there really good, and then I'll just firm the soil around it, firm the, the growing medium around it. Okay, that's two. There's number three. We put it in like this. Okay. Okay. Now, ideally, you want to do this in spring, but uh, I, I did a I did a, uh, what, like, I think, I don't know, probably 15 of them uh, about a month or so ago. 
and uh, they're doing just fine. And this is like age old. I learned this from my mother actually. Um, and because it's that easy, it's just like one, two, and three, and we're done. And those are basically four planted pineapples. Okay, so now what you want to do is you're just gonna you're just gonna take some water and I'm just going to water each of them so that they basically get soaked. And once they're soaked, I will not leave them out in the rain um, for the next, I'd say, month to be safe. Could do it sooner, but for the next month I am going to keep them out of rain as which means essentially I'm going to control their water absorb their, their water the water they get um, so this I will water maybe one or two more times because I just want the, the the bottom of the medium to be completely saturated and then I'll just let it drain now because I've used the type of medium I've used in our area we've got a high humidity uh, for most of the time there's a lot of river sand in there there's also perlite in there which actually helps with the drainage now I'm going to keep them in a very well lit place so pretty much actually like this which is it's it's pretty sunny here so I might I might go and put them out in the Sun it looks like there's shade there but that's because the the table's actually casting shadow right there, but for the most part of the day they actually get quite a bit of sunlight there So I'm going to put them there and and so they get a lot of sunlight um, But they won't get a lot of rain. I will control the water that they get for the next month um, and and the roots will very quickly start to develop out of these pineapple plants Okay, you can also just keep them keep them under a roof if you've got if you've got um, if you've got one well I mean obviously you've got a roof but uh, you know what I mean so so pretty much they're gonna sit and I will water them at least once a week um, and, and then let them go and they'll start to grow and that's pretty much it that's simple guys if you have a, a pineapple and you buy pineapples at the, at the shop um, this is a really good way to actually just get a very beautiful plant but also get to eat something that you that you've grown yourself and I think it's a really good um, project for your kids as well because um, my I think my mom taught me this because uh, I didn't really know where pineapples came from or you know I thought that uh, Phoenix reclinata uh, no the Canary Island palm I thought that, that those were giant palm trees because the way they used to cut them in our city um, they looked like giant palm pineapples sitting in the ground um, and so my mom um, showed me how to actually grow a pineapple from scratch um, and this is the easiest way to do that you could do them from seed as well but then that just becomes a whole lot more complicated um, maybe we'll touch on that sometime in the distant future um, alrighty so if you have any comments or questions, please hit us up in the comments section. But other than that, I'm going to go uh, give them one more watering, position them out, and then go home. So yeah, guys, have a good one and stay safe. Look after yourselves and your families. And lots of love from me and my plants to all of you out there. All right. Cheerio then. Goodbye. You may leave now. <laughs>